Hello everyone, it's Lennon. Welcome to the channel. Today I thought I would take you along a journey through my Book of Shadows book of ideas. <laughs> this is an inexpensive book that I got out of the dollar store that I have filled with bullet point ideas for things to go in my Book of Shadows. <laughs> um, and the reason, the reason I do this is because a lot of my books of mirrors, books of shadows, grimoires, whatever you want to call them, aren't like the binder or made in a way that I can take pages out, rearrange pages. They're already pre-made books. So there's like, I really want to know for sure that a certain page will be helpful. And for me, the book of shadows and the book of mirrors, uh, I kind of use those terms interchangeably because my book of mirrors is like witchy thoughts, but my book of shadows is more my reference. Like there are the pages that I want to make beautifully. Okay. Artfully that I'll, I want to be able to flip to them and go, okay, this is what these moon phases are. This is what this is. This is, what, oh yeah, I remember this spell. Um, things like that. And a lot of them you can, a lot of the, t the things that people tell you to put in your grimoire or book of shadows are things that you can look up on the internet. So I use this book to add a little bit of gnosis, a little bit of my own personal gnosis ideas, so that the book of shadows is more geared towards me and like my my actual practice instead of just the normal here's the wheel of the year here's the sabbats here's the rites here's the espits and while all that stuff's great and you want to put those things in your books i have some ideas i have some ideas that i thought were off the beaten track a little bit that i wanted to share with you so i'm going to give you some i guess book of shadows prompts and y'all can let me know how you like them so and I've kind of highlighted them so that I'm not like reading you every single thing I've written down because a lot of it is personal, of course, but I, the reason I wanted to make this is because I find that when I look up ideas for the books of shadows, I get a lot of the conventional things. And I believe that some of these are less conventional. So hopefully you agree. All right. Okay. Right off the rip hand and footprints. Okay. Now I know that we've probably all seen the handprint page on the book of that shadows page, beautifully done with like paint on like Pinterest or something. Right. I always resonated with that idea that like my soul resonated with this idea. And I've even executed this in my own books because I feel like your book has energy. There, there's a transference of energy there. And so I feel like if you had a hand or two, okay, like one on each page, you can use that as sort of an energy transference within your own self. You can do this for basic energy work, I believe. Like that's where you can go to, maybe this is where you can go to ground, to center, right? Or actually the grounding is coming in, in a second, okay? But you could use it to for some sort of basic energy work, okay? where the hand prints, but I've also done feet prints. Now I'm almost always barefoot. That's just how I've always been my entire life. I've been a feral, a feral girl. Okay. Feral girl. And so I liked the concept of not only the hand prints, but also the footprints as well. So I wash my feet really well, put some paint on it and then step on my book. Now, one thing I will say that if you have pre-made books, like I do, um, let me show you, let me show you one. Now, here's my big boy, okay? Here's my big boy, okay? Now, what I like to do with some of the pages, if I'm going to be like actively utilizing them for something, like at putting my hands on them or putting my feet on them, I will do it towards the middle of the book. That way, let's get to a blank page here. Um, and I tend to bounce around. I don't organize my books. Uh, it's kind of like, I just kind of flip to whatever I need. I don't feel the need to organize it. I, so things are all over the place, but I'll flip to the middle. Okay. And this is like where my feet would go. And then I might put some art stuff around it or some thoughts about grounding, some thoughts about, uh, how, like how I can get generate energy through the feet. 
uh, maybe touch on earthing a little bit, which is a little different than grounding. It's a grounding technique, but it's a little different. So I might put all that on these pages, but it can, it can be an active working page. I can set this on the ground, place my feet on the feet prints, and it's another way that I can use energy. Or I can physically use my book as a ground, like to ground me. The roots, instead of going into the into this ground and I can, you know, visualize the roots and all that, but I can visualize it going through the book, which I believe adds in the energy of the book. I, I believe that the book should have its own, or does have its own energy, right? It's like, it needs to be like radiating, like Winifred's book. It needs to be radiating with some energy. So, hand and feet prints, okay? Do with that what you will, all right? You can do ear prints. I don't care. Fingerprints. <laughs> fingerprints are so unique that that I think that would be cool but you get that kind of hand prints so anyways I put some childhood things on here one thing that I put on here is childhood dreams I have had two two or three uh, dreams when I was a child okay a child that were recurring back then they're not recurring now but they were recurring back then and I can remember three very vividly I believe that dedicating a page to your childhood dreams a recurring dream a recurring nightmare even I think that it can kind of especially if it's a nightmare it can kind of give you some power back if you feel like you're losing some power to a nightmare um, if you can but in a dream sense I believe that this can kind of unlock sacred symbols for you unlock things maybe unlock some inner child work for you going through your childhood dreams. So I believe dedicating a page to childhood dreams would actually probably be helpful. It has for me. Uh, along the same lines, I believe imaginary friends. Did you have imaginary friends? I believe that they deserve a page. I believe that imaginary friends act as childhood archetypal servitors. Okay. To be honest with you, I believe that that's what they are. And I believe that especially if you had a very like vivid relationship with this, this, these, this, or these ch imaginary friends, I believe that they need a page too. So yeah, childhood dreams, imaginary friends, whatever, right? Working with archetypes. Now I put, um, Rorschach pages. I have done this on like paper, like actual like copy paper. I've made my own like ink blots out of black acrylic paint and laid them like laid like once they were folded out, okay, I laid them out, allowed them to dry and then can tack them in here and use them as really cool like almost fractal line ink blot scrying see what you can see like mist very mystic and magical uh it makes me feel magical to look through these ink ink blots and see what i can see and it's very it's been very it's been an interesting practice like in my scrying i guess you could say it's been interesting because i tend to see different things every time i open the book to that page and it always fills me with like this magic and this i'm seeing this right now and that means something it, it, it means something that I'm looking that I'm seeing a butterfly now or that I'm seeing Jack the Ripper you know like whatever whatever I'm seeing um, I feel like some sort of like ink blot uh, it, it aids me in symbol work uh, which is pretty pretty high up there in my practice anyway uh, going a little into pop culture movies I have some childhood movies that were very I guess you could say were and are still very important to me there was something about them that grabbed me there was something about them that I that I still have visceral reactions to the quotes in there that I die for the quotes in there like labyrinth legend with Tom Cruise and Tim Curry um, Cutthroat Island, which was like my all time favorite movie, uh, because there was something about back then, there was something about like a blockbuster type movie with a girl pirate being the main character that just drove me insane. And I lived out many a pirate fantasy while watching that movie. And 
it still pulls and grabs me when I listen to the opening credits today. So I've dedicated pages in my Book of Shadows to these movies. Almost like, I mean, you could even print out their old movie posters. You could put quotes down. You could, you know, put a little, like a little note section and put your thoughts, like why you are drawn to this movie. Why are you drawn to these uh, characters even? You know, like if you're drawn to a certain character, I believe that they need a page in your book. Okay. Astral altars, a page for your astral altars and things that you would like to add to your altars. So the way I've set this up, okay, I keep wanting to show this, but the way I set this up is like, say I have a page that's, say I have a page that's, for the astral altar, okay? That could just be a little like doodad, kind of like this, you know, like in the middle that symbolizes my astral altar, and then information on how I get there, ways I can achieve uh, altered state of consciousness, right? For the mind, pa the uh, astral specifically. Then the mind palace, building the mind palace, a separate page, maybe the the, you know, opposite page, of the mind palace specifically, what, what elements do I have in there? What are the bare bones of the temple and, or the mind palace? And even, I can even go as fanatical as I want to like add, keep adding things in the margins as to like, Oh, I need to remember to put that in there next time. And I can always go back and reference that. I can cross it out if I like change my mind or if I'm like, you know what, that's not going to, that's not going to help me in my mind palace. I might as well cross that off. So, but it's always good to have a reference for those things in my book. So astral imagine, imagination, mind palace work. Okay. Oh, trace tools for charging in a lot. Uh, actually I'll, I'll probably say this a lot because I know I've written them all in an, or in an unorganized fashion here, but I have lots of pages that are actually useful, like actually practical. Like I've taken some of my sacred jewelry and I'll put it on the page and I'll trace it right. Or draw it right. Like I have a, 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 page, ugh, I have a page dedicated to the rings that I never take off. Right. And if I ever feel in a low mood or I need, I feel like they need to be charged, but I can't really wait for the moon or whatever to get into the, the sign or the phase it needs to be in. Then I can open my book as an energy vessel itself and plot like cast my rings on the ring page as kind of a charge but I can do that for any tool. Do you have sacred tools? Do you have sacred jewelry? Do you have um, any, like, do you have a, a favorite candle holder? You could draw these out and use the actual page in your actual book to place that item onto to charge it. That's all the page is for, is for you to set that item on to charge or to sit there and like get a little bit of the book's energy, right? I thought I find that very helpful for me because I can just open my book again. If it's a practical page, I will say some advice here, put the practical pages towards the middle of the book so that it will sit, you know, it'll sit like this. It'll, it'll stay open. <laughs> oh, painting with certain things that you find useful. Okay. I have, dedicated pages to painting like like scribbles okay scribble pages and you can even use this as like the the underpainting if you will for another topic but i have been known to use sacred liquids in my book for underpaintings or pages themselves of just like squiggly scratch or like doodles with coffee tea mineral blood uh, mineral blood menstrual blood and i i use these like sacred liquids. You can even use moon water. Like if you can, if you wanted a watercolor paint something in a page, you could use moon water. That's another fantastic thing to do, but you could use sacred waters, sacred liquids, body fluids, whatever to paint a page in your book. And you could even use like I have like the menstrual blood. The whole page is, is painted with the blood or your regular blood. Um, but then the page itself is dedicated to the menstrual cycle. You know, my coffee page has like rings where like coffee rings everywhere. <laughs> and it's just like 
a dedication to coffee, right? Like to my love of coffee, you know, I can open it and smell it and <laughs> oh, and then I have actual like activities in the book as well. So I've drawn a labyrinth because that's a sacred symbol to me. So I've drawn a labyrinth that's about this big. It's about this big. Okay. And what I can do is it's like a calm down. I can open it to that page, to the labyrinth page. Maybe I'll have a little bit on labyrinths, why they're important to me, yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. But I can use my finger and go through the labyrinth as a, as, as kind of like a let's reverse the anxiety. Let's, let's use this to calm down, to cool down, right? Whenever I feel like I'm, like maybe I'm already using my book, I feel like an excess of energy whatever the case is, I can use that labyrinth, open it up to the labyrinth page and just come in it and tr trace my finger around the labyrinth and that, that can calm me down. So that's like almost like a practical slash activity sheet that you could have in your book. Oh, visions, visions that now my whole life, I have been a daydreamer. Okay. And I mean this in the most outlandish way, to be honest with you. I've actually made a video about this, but I have had very, very vivid daydreams. We'll be somewhere, I'll be off in my own little world, and then poof, a vision will come, right? And it will come out of nowhere. Usually it comes out of nowhere. And some of my visions have stuck with me. Some of the visions that I've had uh, were like so, so kind of visceral that I felt like my like they needed a page in the book. So I've made pages dedicated to certain daydreams I've had. Uh, not to mention you could actually put dreams in here, like real dreams, but I've put daydreams, visions I've had. I, I had a vision once. I, we were driving in the car. It was like a really sunny afternoon, like late afternoon, you know, like this, the way the sun was beating down, it was probably like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And all of a sudden, I thought to myself, I want a moon circle. Like it was like this moon pool, but it, it was very intricate and I couldn't even explain it. Um, I, I know I say this a lot, but it, I'm actually drawing, I'm trying to draw that and execute it for the Oracle deck that I'm currently drawing. <laughs> so the moon dial will be in the Oracle deck and this vision needed a page in my book of shadows. So I've dedicated a lot of pages to visions that I've had, daydreams, dreams, whatever, fantasies, sacred sound pages. Now this could be actual pages that you dedicate to things that you like that you make that, that makes sound. Like say you use chimes in your craft, you could dedicate a page to your chimes that you use. Maybe even draw your specific chimes out as a dedication page. But I've learned that certain sounds throughout the course of my life hold lots of meaning music aside music aside music is is its own beautiful thing for me but these are like sacred sounds like the cricket or the cicada or a train whistle or a babbling brook right and these are all sounds that when i think about them or when i hear them i'm very calm i'm very i can get very centered very fast and it plugs me into a very centered, calm, peaceful, magical place. So those sacred sounds, I've got a couple of them, like I just mentioned, uh, dedicated in the in my book. Let's see, pages dedicated to art or artists that you admire. Say you have a fascination with Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, I know I do. Okay, <laughs> or the Pre-Raphaelites like I do, or, or an, a, an artist specifically, not necessarily one of their works, like Picasso or Caravaggio or Monet, Monet, like whoever, like, do you have a famous Frida Kahlo? I know she's pretty famous in the, in, in the witchcraft, you know, world, rightly so. But do you have a famous art? Do you have famous art, like specific art pieces or famous artists that you admire, that you feel a connection to, that you feel kind of like this pull, this red thread to, I would dedicate a page to those things in your book as well. 
Because I feel like dedicating your craft to certain things will help you map out new ways to build the craft and new ways to celebrate yourself and the one, the things that you find blissful and joyful. I think that if they have, if they hold space in your mind, then they should hold space in your book. Okay. More pop, more pop culture is book dedications. There are certain books that lots of witches, myself included, have talked about using certain books as sacred texts. This could be the book of Psalms from the Bible. Okay. This could be Alice in Wonderland. This could be women who run with the wolves. This could be Wuthering Heights. I've got so many that I love. This could be fiction. This could be nonfiction. This could be a memoir, right? Like a biography of someone's. But do you have sacred texts in your craft? I believe, again, that there should be a page or several devoted to the books that you love. And I mean, cause a lot of people talk about how you could put things from witchy books in here, but I think that it's just as important if you're, if you're a, a reading witch, okay. And you read more than just witchy, witchy books, but yet you find that these other fictional tales, fairy tales, okay. Fairy tales, fantastic. I've used fairy tales. Beauty and the Beast happens to be uh, lives rent free in a lot of these damn pages. Okay. Because that's one of my favorites. Um, the original, okay. French version, <laughs> but fairy tales, fiction stories, like my favorite book growing up was a book called blood and chocolate. It's about fucking werewolves. Okay. But I have a page dedicated to it because of the way the book made me feel and the way the book continues to make me feel and the way that the book may have shaped you into the person you are today. I believe that it's a part of knowing yourself that aids in the craft. So, oh, consecration page. This is another practical page that I would say is, I don't know, like instead of charging, it's more, we are making the things magical. So, you can make the page dedicated to your tools, trace your tools, whatever, like I said, and use those as like charging pages to get the books energy, transfer energy. We're doing energy manipulation with the book, okay? <laughs> but then you could also have pages dedicated to certain items or a generalized one page that maybe has like an intricate mandala or flower of life or some kind of like cool circle in an amulet type of a fashion. And that page, that one page is dedicated to consecrating your items. I would visual, uh, well, okay, I'll tell you what I do. I have this like mandala flower of life thing going on on my consecration page. And then what I do is when I open the book, I envision this like sparkly light. It can be in any color. Mine's like a goldish, you know, glary color. Um, and it lights up like it's on fire, the whole thing. Okay. It lights up like it's on fire and then the glitter goes around and it's kind of like singeing all of the points of this mandala. When the whole thing is lit up, I then put whatever item I want to consecrate on the circle. Okay. Then I visualize that same light going into those items. I don't have to use the moon. I don't have to use this. I don't have to use that. I can just use my book and this drawing of this mandala. Okay. So I have a consecration page and this is like, Again, this is for items that I feel I want to use and maybe I don't want to like wait around for the moon or charge with this crystal or da, 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 da. You know, it doesn't really matter. I can just open my book and consecrate whenever, <laughs> you know? So there's that. Down home stretch, okay? On the home stretch. Only a few more that I've highlighted, I believe. Okay, now I hope that you would have seen my ward video. <laughs> I love to make wards, home protection wards, or pretty shapes out of sticks and twine, okay, <laughs> to hang in the tree Blair Witch style, all right? I love to do that. I've always done that. I love hanging things from trees. I love hanging things from my, my the ceiling of my house, okay? You don't even know. I guess you do know because you'll saw the lights uh, in, in a video a while ago, but 
I have things hanging from my ceiling, from the trees outside. I've got wind chimes. I've got uh, wind dancers, which are things that don't make noise, but they like swish in the wind. I call them wind dancers. Um, I love things that hang. Okay. So when I map out new ones or, you know, whatever, like if I have ideas as to like which kind of shapes I want, then I'll draw them out on a page future wards, future protection charms, or whatever you want to call them. And you just like draw them out like, like an actual stick. Actually, I have an example. Like a, I have a little mini book here that I use as well. A lot, a lot of uh, mini cheat books that I have laying around. Yeah, see? Yeah. Something as easy as that. You know? This is how I want my things to look, right? Like maybe I put what, what, like feathers or bottles, baby bottles, baby food jars, whatever. Bones, you know, like if I'm going to use a specific bone that I have, I map them out in little drawings. I dedicate a page to that in my book. Uh, oh, tattoos. You can have a page in your book of, or pages, okay, in your book of shadows for the tattoos that you either already have and that you've like used like like that are for the craft, right? If you have any or fantasy tattoos, like things that you would like. I know I have several, um, I only have two tattoos, but I have lots that I want and I usually try to draw them out as best as I can. Okay. Like the idea that I have. And if they're like, especially if they're related to the craft, I have a few pages dedicated to future tattoos and how that can be related, how I would relate that to the craft. Would I relate that to the craft? Like just have a tattoo dedication page, you know, on your ritual pages, because I know a lot of us witches that have books of shadows, grimoires, what have you, we like to write out, we would write out our rituals, right? So say we wrote out a ritual. I have little signatures that are about this big that look like small memo pads that I make myself uh, out of like staples or glue or stitch it like a real signature. And there's like four or five pages of like a tiny little booklet that I glue in to like a bottom corner of that ritual page and that's for notes so that can be like i've done this ritual on blank 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 this is what happened da, 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 right i can like actually take notes and there's a there's instead of messing like the actual ritual page up you don't even have to glue it in the book you can just have it in that that like with that page and you can you have already you have paper dedicated to note taking for the ritual I think that's important. So have some note pages scattered around for your notes. When you want to open it and you're doing a spell or you're doing a ritual, you got somewhere to write notes. You don't have to go look for a, a notebook somewhere, you know, to jot your thing, to jot your thoughts down. Uh, oh, using food. I have been known to use certain foods as stamps. Again, you could do this as an underpainting, but I love to cut my apples and find the pentagram. Okay. So I just love this so magical. It's so witchy that I just love to do it. So you could cut those apples, slice those apples in half and, you know, use paint or ink or something and stamp your book. Okay. As like an apple dedication page, you can use celery. Lots of people use the celery, the end of the stalk, uh, cause it's in the shape of a rose. So you can like make red and you know, or if you have, a page that's dedicated to a deity that likes roses, like who? Aphrodite, Persephone, I don't know. Um, you could use celery, the, the shape of the stalk there when it's this cut, and make little rose shapes, you know? But using that food essence, I feel pours a little of that food essence into the book. So um, that's a little, you know, that's a little magic that you can do that's using almost like ritual food items, you know? Almost like you can use those to, um, like if you were going to use that as an offering after you use it in the page. So that would be kind of like a cool mix that you could do. But using food and like stamping, that would be kind of cool. Um, a current events worksheet. Okay. 
there may be some of us that keep up with the, like, you know, a lot of us, we like keep up with the times, right? Keep up with what the worldly events, the current events that are going on. You could have a worksheet set up in your book, okay? And this is a blank worksheet set up of like, this is what, this is the date, this is the event, this is, you know, this is who it's impacting, this is where it's at in the world, um, and this is my thoughts on it, right? But you could have it set up like a blank worksheet that's in your book permanently, and you open it when you're, say you're feeling drawn to a certain, like a certain event that's going on in the world. Maybe you're feeling grief, loss, you're feeling a collect. It's it's more about the collective, right? So you could open your book of shadows up to this current event worksheet, and then have another notebook or uh, one that you've already put in there, um, and take some notes on the current events in a witchy capacity. Use your witchcraft to get to your feelings on the current events. So I think that, that having these kind of I use this a lot, like build your own deity worksheets. Uh, summon me from the dead worksheets. I have got a lot of worksheets in my book of shadows. Okay, where I like to have like a bare bone set up, and then I'll open it when I have fresh thoughts, you know. And then I use kind of like my book of mirrors. I'll pull that out to coincide with the book of shadows worksheets. So that's how I work with that. Pages for songs, okay? Because like I said, music is powerful. Are there certain songs that you're drawn to? I would dedicate pages to your songs, okay? That you love. Uh, oh, paper air, paper airplane template. I have one specifically. I grew up with a book, a small little children's book that I got like a scholastic book fair of paper airplane templates, templates. And I have one in my book of shadows because I use, or I've been known to use paper airplanes in my air magic. I write the damn spell down on a piece of copy paper and fold it up origami. Not really. Oh, it's not origami fold it up in an, in a paper airplane style and then just cast that shit in the wind. <sighs> yeah. Now, of course, afterwards I'll go retrieve it and, you know, get rid of it how you would a normal spell remnant, but there's that. But I have been known to use paper airplanes and the template itself is in the book. Okay. <laughs> so that, I thought that was funny. That's why I wrote it down. Oh, charm casting sheet. I actually have a charm casting sheet that's basically like it's not an, aff I guess it's an affirmation, but it's more words of self-love power. And it's kind of set up like a maze and I've got all these like beautiful words and I take my charms, my small bag of charms, cast them down and wherever they land, I write those words down um, as an act of self-love magic. And I've got a sheet outside like over on my tarot table, like, you know, outside of my book, but I actually have a, a couple charm casting sheets in my book. Again, this could go into practical pages, pages that you're going to use. Okay. Maybe you have a Ouija board set up in the whole two page setup. Maybe you like for a pendulum work, maybe you have a circle for pendulum work. Maybe you have, maybe you utilize sacred maps of your areas, like in the charmed, you know, you could get a map of your area, paste it in your book. Okay. And use that for charm casting, pendulum work. Hey, you know, oh, the pendulum's kind of in this area. Maybe I should check out and see if there's something cool in that area that I can do in terms of like a staycation. Maybe there's something sacred there. Maybe I can pilgrimage to something in blah, blah, blah area, right? That's, that's some staycation magic. But, you know, anyways, I digress. So, charm casting, practical sheets. Uh, I actually have the charm casting sheet on my coffee page. Go to my link tree down below if you want a copy, okay? But anyway, I believe in being able to not just open your book and read it, and like ruminate on what you've done in the past, but actually find ways to use the book. Like the book is alive. Like the, it is, okay? It's it's just teeming with energy, you know, it's just teeming with energy and abundance and love. And you've poured so much work into it that I believe that it's just like a living thing, okay? And using it and having, and forming a relationship with it is what's gonna make it keep working for you. So I, I do believe in the practical pages.
Yeah, and I think the last one was pages for symbols because you you guys know I'm a suckle. Su I am a sucker for symbols. Okay, I've got lots of pages dedicated to certain symbols that fill me with the most witchy vibes, or the ones that I utilize the most, the ones that I see. Uh, this could be signs and symbols that you see out in nature from your deity, like whatever. Okay, symbols that are important to you but also important to your craft. They belong in your book. So, okay, well, I've got all these books here. <laughs> I've got all these books here <laughs> uh, to, I've got all these books here I need to put up now. <laughs> but I hope that this was helpful and useful and fun as I went through some Book of Shadows ideas that are a little unconventional. Let me know if you have any practical page application sheets for your books, uh, witchy books. And let me know what you put in your books of shadows that might be unconventional. Let me know your thoughts. Hope everyone is having, having hope everyone is having a great day. Much love.